Mother, why does Daddy insist on instant Sanka coffee? Your father says instant Sanka is 100% pure coffee and the only instant coffee that lets him sleep. And your father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as Father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Anderson. Brought to you by Instant Sanka Coffee and Post 40% Bran Flakes. Mother, next time you're choosing a cereal, remember new Post 40% Bran Flakes give your family all the important, keep regular benefits of bran in a cereal with a delicious new magic oven flavor. Insist on Post Bran Flakes, the cereal preferred and eaten by far more people than any other Bran Flakes. This weekend, get post 40% Bran Flakes in the new family size 15 ounce package. They're good, and so good for you. Well, it's a pleasant Saturday morning in Springfield, and out at the white frame house on Maple Street, the stream of life seems to be rolling along with scarcely a murmur. In fact, the only sound at the moment comes from the breakfast room where Margaret is talking on the telephone. Like this. It does seem odd. I talked to Grace just the other day and she didn't say anything about it. Margaret! Do you suppose one of the other girls could have picked it up? I believe Mildred was there. Margaret, have you seen... Oh, here you are. Oh, what do you want, dear? I wanted to ask you about this, uh... No, it was early in the afternoon. <laughs> no, I remember because Grace came in before I did. It wasn't on the chair when I came in, I'm sure. I certainly would have noticed it. What is it, Jim? Never mind, honey. I'll wait till you finish. Is it important? No. I was just wondering what happened to this blue suit of mine. I put it on, and for some reason... It... Well, I think it's a job for the PTA. <laughs> oh, what's the use? Oh, wait, dear. Don't go away. Hmm? I'll talk to you later, Evelyn. We'll get it straightened out. Bye-bye. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I just couldn't hang up. Grace Milligan lost her book with all the minutes of the PTA meetings and everyone's frantic. Now, what's the trouble? No trouble. It's just that something's happened to this blue suit I have on. It doesn't fit. It's too tight. Well, there's a very simple answer to that, dear. I know. It's that darn dry cleaner. Dear, the last time you wore that suit was over a year ago. What's that got to do with the cleaners? The suit hasn't been to the cleaners. Well, then who shrunk it? The suit hasn't shrunk You've expanded. You mean I've gained weight? Margaret, that's ridiculous. Well, you have. I weigh exactly what I did ten years ago. I never put on weight, you know that. Have you, um, weighed yourself lately? No, but I'll go upstairs and do it right now. It has to be this suit. I guess I'd know if I were putting on weight. Hi, Mom. Hello, bud. Do you know the most important thing for a captain on a ship? Well, that's hard to say. It's been a long time since I was the captain of a ship. <laughs> Do you want me to tell you? Tell me what, bud? What's the most important thing to a captain on a ship? Oh, that reminds me. You can put the water on the table. It's a telescope. What is? The most important thing to a captain on a ship. <laughs> bud, what are you talking about? A telescope. Look out the kitchen window. Can you see the bird sitting on top of the flagpole on top of the city hall? I can't even see the flagpole. How can you see a bird? I can't. But if I had Joe's telescope and there was a bird sitting up there, we could look through Joe's telescope and see every feather on the bird. <laughs> really? I can buy it for a dollar and a half. Buy what? Joe's telescope. It's in perfect condition. It has glass in both ends. <laughs> Well, you were given your allowance on Wednesday. Go ahead and buy it. I can't, Mom. There were some other things I had to get. And... You haven't spent your allowance already. Well, I didn't spend it exactly. It just sort of goes. Sort of. Mommy! Fade out, knucklehead. I'm talking to Mom. I'm trying to get lunch, Angel. What is it? Betty says she needs 50 cents. Tell her I got here first. You keep out of it, bud. It's a strange thing. I just can't understand it, honey. What's this, dear? Are you sure our scales are right? Mother! Just a minute, Betty. I told Joe I'd let him know about the telescope. How about it, Mom? Well, Bud... Margaret. What, dear? What are you doing with that can of soup? 
What? You've been carrying it around the kitchen. You don't seem to know where you're going. <laughs> well, I am a little confused, dear. There's a bird sitting on top of the city hall, <laughs> and Betty wants 50 cents, and Bud needs a telescope, and I'm trying to get lunch. At... Lunch? That's what the soup's for. Kathy? I asked her. She didn't answer me yet. Look, kids. I was uh, here first, Dad. I was talking to Mom, and Kathy butted in. All right, but just a minute. Let me talk to your father. Now, what about the scales? Well, there must be something wrong with them. I weighed myself just now, and I've gained nine pounds. They can't be right. I'm sorry, but they are, dear. That's the reason your suit doesn't fit. You've put on weight. I can't believe it. I never put on weight. Dad. I've been particularly careful about it. You know that, Margaret. Dad. Now, why all of a sudden I should gain nine pounds? Doesn't make sense. Hello? One, two, three, four. Hello? What are you doing, bud? I was just testing. I was talking and I could hear myself all right, but it didn't seem like anybody else could. Well, you're coming in loud and clear now. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, dear, would you mind taking the children in the den or someplace so I can get lunch sure. on? Sure. Come on, kids. Nine pounds. It doesn't seem possible. Mother! What is it, princess? Mother's in the kitchen. Oh, I want to see you, Father. I'll be right down. Dad. Daddy. Take your time, princess. You have two ahead of you. Now, who's first? All I need is a dollar and a half, Dad. I'm first. I get a quarter. Hold it now. What is this? It's for a telescope, Dad. You can look at the moon. I've seen the moon. <laughs> a quarter for me and 50 cents for Betty. Now, wait. Back up. Back up. You kids are supposed to have your own money. What happened to your allowances? Father, I'm glad you're here. I simply have to have three dollars. Three dollars? I thought you were trying for 50 cents. Well, that was when I thought you'd gone and I'd have to get it from Mother. Fifty cents would be all I could get from her. But where money is concerned, you're so much more understanding. <laughs> I see. Understanding in this case being a word meaning soft in the head. <laughs> Dad, I told Joe I'd let him know. And I gotta have a quarter for the movie. All right, now hold everything. May I ask one question? All three of you were given your week's allowance on Wednesday, three days ago. What happened? I don't know, Father. The money just goes. Yeah, it just goes. It sure does. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> the whole trouble is that you kids don't take care of your money. You just throw it around. We don't throw our money around. No, we buy things with it. But that's just it. You buy anything and everything that comes along. You kids seem to have the idea that parents were just made to hand out money. What you don't seem to realize is that there's a limit to what you can spend. The point I'm trying to put over is that you kids have to learn to manage your money, to plan and get along with what you have. Well, how can we, Father? We don't have anything. You have your allowances. It's about three feet long. What is? <laughs> Joe's telescope. <laughs> Goes up like an accordion. Bud, have you heard anything I've been saying? Sure. Do you children understand what I mean? Do you grasp the importance of it? Of course, Father. Sure, Dad. I do, Daddy. Well, thank goodness. Now may I have the three dollars? <laughs> oh, no. The telescope's a dollar and a half. Can I have my quarter, Daddy? I don't know. Maybe there's something I'm doing wrong. What do you mean? Why can't I make it clear to you kids that you can't buy everything you see? There has to be a limit. What if you were out in the world living on a salary? But we're not. If we had a salary, that'd be different. Oh? If a guy gets a salary, then he can do something. I sure wish I had a salary. Hmm. Daddy? Yes? What's a salary? <laughs> it's money that's paid to you when you, uh, work. So you kids think you could do better if you had a salary? Why, certainly. Then we'd have something to go on. All right. I'll tell you what I'll do. You all have jobs that you do around the house. So for one week, we'll try a little experiment. I'm going to pay each of you a salary. Really, Father? No kidding. Now, wait. There's a catch to it. The idea behind this whole thing is to see if you can manage your money. So you'll have to pay for your room and board. What do we do with the board? <laughs> <laughs> That's our meals. We gotta eat boards? <laughs> oh, 
never mind. I think it's a simply superior idea, Father. Yeah, well, wait till I tell Joe. Now, suppose we do this. I'll pay you three dollars a day. Three bucks a day? Oh, man. Now, you'll have to pay for your meals. Say, 25 cents for breakfast, 25 cents for lunch, and 50 cents for dinner. That's fair enough, I guess. Three bucks a day. So that's a dollar for your meals, and we'll say a dollar a day for your room. That's two dollars. And then 25 cents a day for your laundry. Gee, that's two and a quarter a day. It only leaves 75 cents. Well, with phone calls at, say, five cents each, you still have at least 50 cents a day clear profit. Three bucks a day. What about me, Daddy? I don't need as much as Bud and Betty. We'll we'll figure you at half price for everything, kitten. I'll give you a dollar and a half. Get ready for lunch, dear. Bring the children. I guess I could manage. Gee, a dollar and a half. What are you going to do with your money, shrimp? I think I'll buy a car. (laughs) (laughs) What's going on in here? Mother, guess what? Father's putting us on a salary. Three bucks a day. What's this? We're going to try it for a week. I'm going to pay them a salary for the work they do around the house. But, dear... Now, wait. Bud and Betty get $3 a day. Out of this, they have to pay 25 cents for breakfast, 25 cents for lunch, and 50 cents for dinner. Holy smoke. That's a dollar a day just to eat. Believe me, Bud, on you, we're going to lose money. (laughs) (laughs) Then they'll pay a dollar a day for room and 25 cents for laundry, plus five cents each for phone calls. All except Kathy. She goes at half price. Mm, Well, we can try it. But lunch is on the table now. Can you postpone the employment project until later? Let's start it now. Three bucks a day. That's fine with me. Father, you have a wicked gleam in your eye. Is this a trick of some kind? What do you mean, a trick? I don't know. You look too happy about it. Please, lunch is on the table. Come on, Betty, quit arguing. Just a minute. I'll tell you what we'll do, Father. We'll try this $3 a day and pay our own expenses. If you do it, too. Me? You'd better come to lunch, dear. You're getting into deep water. (laughs) How could he pay money to himself? Could you do that, Dad? Well, yes, I could. uh, But why? You see, he doesn't want to do it. There's something fishy. I knew there was. There's nothing of the kind. Then why don't you do it? All right, if you insist, I'll go along with you. Same pay, same expenses. It's a deal. But, dear, how can you... Just leave this to me, honey. Boy, three bucks a day. I gotta call Joe. I get to phone first. I have to call Janie. I gotta go tell Patty. Now, hold it a second. Remember, you have to live on your salary for the whole week. We know, Father. If you spend it all before the week's over, remember, you don't eat. If you can't pay your room rent... Out you go. (laughs) Yeah, we understand. Give me the phone. I was first. Remember, five cents a call. All right, Father. Dear, lunch is on. Come on, we'll start. The kids will be along. Hello, Joe. Bud, it's okay on the telescope. Hurry up. I've got to call Janie. Oh, I'll pay cash. I have money. Jim Anderson, what in heaven's name do you think you're doing? Well, I've tried every other method I know to teach the children to take care of their money. This one is drastic, but it'll be effective. Oh? At the rate they're going, their week's salary will last them about three days, possibly until Tuesday. Then listen to the wailing and the moaning when we tell them, no money, no meals. This will teach them a lesson they'll never forget. Well, I hope it works, dear. But remember, you're in this right along with them. (laughs) Don't worry about me, honey. As the burglar said as the police put him in the patrol wagon, I'm just going along for the ride. Well, in just a minute, we'll see whether Father's giving the youngsters some good financial advice or vice versa. Right now, Mother, here's some excellent advice for you about the breakfast you serve your family. Chances are, Mother, you know that bran is good for your family because it provides important keep-regular benefits. Maybe you've even served it, but found that the family wasn't enthusiastic about its taste. Well, now, try post-40% bran flakes and discover that something wonderful has happened. Yes, post-bran flakes now have a marvelous new flavor, 
a magic oven flavor and crisper texture that's truly delicious. In fact, it's so delicious. Post Bran Flakes are preferred and eaten by far more people than any other Bran Flakes. Yes, Post Bran Flakes give your family the vital keep regular benefits of Bran in a cereal they'll really enjoy. Start serving Post Bran Flakes tomorrow. Remember, for goodness sake, eat Post Bran Flakes. So good and so good for you. This weekend, Mother, buy Post 40% Bran Flakes in the new family size 15 ounce package. It's the cereal bought by far more people than any other Bran Flakes. Remember, they're good. And so good for you. Well, let's see how the big financial experiment is working out at the end. Last Saturday, when Jim decided to pay each of the children a salary for their work around the house, he was pretty sure the money would be gone by Tuesday at the latest. In fact, it was starting to burn holes in their pockets almost before the deal was made. And now here it is Friday afternoon, the last day of the experiment. Can the kids go all the way and upset Jim's carefully laid plan? Well, let's see. The head of the Anderson household is just arriving home from the office. Like this. Margaret! I'm in the kitchen, dear. Hello, honey. Hi. How was your day? Oh, the usual. Where are the children? Oh, they're out somewhere. By the way, how did you happen to wear that old suit today? Well, it looked like it might rain this morning. Hmm. I'm surprised you could get into it now that you're moving up into the heavyweight class. I'm taking care of that weight situation. How are the kids doing with their money? Did they pay for their lunches? Yep, cash on the line, all three of them. They did? How about you? Did you pay for yours? Certainly. But I can't understand how they've managed to make that money stretch. The way they started out, I was sure they'd never make it. They haven't borrowed any from you, have they? No. And they've paid for everything. I put the money in a jar up in the cupboard. But how have they done it? Probably by being careful, watching their pennies. That's what you wanted them to do, wasn't it? Yes. But I certainly didn't think they'd do it. You sound like you're disappointed. No, I'm not disappointed. But I am surprised. Of course, the week isn't over yet. They still have dinner tonight to pay for. <laughs> they have enough to pay for, I'm quite sure. Do uh, you, dear? Well, Margaret, don't be silly. Of course, it hasn't been easy starting off every day with just three dollars, and then paying you a dollar for the room, 25 cents for breakfast, and then the laundry, and 50 cents for dinner. It hasn't left anything for high living. But I've managed, and I have 50 cents to pay for my dinner tonight. Oh, you're very thrifty, dear. But I just can't imagine how the kids did it. I was sure they'd go broke. Well, you should be proud of them. Oh, I am. But, well, as I said, it isn't over yet. The end of the week is always the hard pull on a salary. Paying for that last meal. Excuse me, I have to get this casserole back in the oven. We're having a one-dish dinner tonight. Oh, Mother, I... Oh, hello, Father. Well, hello, Princess. How are you? Me? I'm all right. No, uh, problems? Well, to tell you the real positive truth, Father, I do have kind of a problem. So it finally happened, eh, Princess? You just couldn't make that money stretch to the end of the week. No, Father, it... I know, it can slip through your fingers before you know it. Now, Princess, I'm not going to lecture you. If you've spent your salary, then it's gone. You'll simply have to... But it isn't gone. It isn't? No. <laughs> I've kept track. I have 50 cents left to pay for dinner tonight. Oh, Life's just one disappointment after another, isn't it, dear? <laughs> Margaret, I'm not disappointed. I just... Well, uh, what was the problem, Princess? I'm going to the football game with Ralph tonight, and his car isn't running. Oh, that. Well, I guess you can take ours. Oh, thank you, Father. You're a doll, an absolute doll. Betty, find Kathy and Bud. Dinner's almost ready. How do you like that, Margaret? Never, never before has Betty been able to hold on to her money any longer than it took her to get to a store. Now, why all of a sudden does she do a thing like this? I don't know. But why question? Well, she hasn't learned anything. You never appreciate water until the well runs dry. You know that. You better get ready for dinner, dear. Hi, Mom. 
Mommy, hi, Daddy. Hello, Angel. Hello, kitten. We're about ready to sit down to dinner. Are you going to be with us tonight? I have my quarter. See? <laughs> oh. Well, good for you. Where in the world is Bud? Dinner's all ready. He's playing football out in the lot. What are we having? We're having soup and a nice big casserole. Wash your hands, Angel, and go to the table. And call Betty. Betty! Dinner! Well, it beats me. It absolutely beats me. What's the matter, dear? You just can't depend on kids anymore. <laughs> Come to the table, Father. I'm coming. Kathy, you better go out and call Bud. He was out in the vacant lot scuffling with a bunch of roughnecks. Make room on the table. The soup's hot. Mom! 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 Oh, you're in here. <laughs> Get washed, Bud. I did. Oh, you home, Dan? No, Bud, I'm picking blueberries in Yosemite. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm hungry. Let's eat. Do you have your 50 cents, Bud? Sure, I. It's right here. I. Here's I the money jar. Feed the kitty. There's mine. There's mine. Well, Bud? Oh, gosh, where is it? What happened? Uh, my, my 50 cents. It was right here in my pocket. You mean you've lost it? I had it before I got into the game. Now it's gone. Oh, Bud's out. No dinner for Bud. But I had it. Well, that's unfortunate, son, but if that was all you had left out of your salary, you could have been more careful. Don't I get to eat? Uh, that's up to your father. Well, I don't want to be unreasonable, son, but you knew the rules. The idea of this whole experiment was to make you children responsible for your own money. Yeah, but I'm hungry. I know, son. But if you were out earning your own living, getting along on a salary, you couldn't afford to lose money like that. But I had it. It was in my pocket. I don't doubt it. But suppose you were out on your own, eating in restaurants. You couldn't go in and say, I had some money, but I lost it. Okay. Can I sit here and watch? <laughs> I guess so. Well, put your 50 cents in, Jim. The soup's getting cold. All right. Now, you see, Bud, the rest of us have... <laughs> Where's that 50 cents? There's a hole in my pocket. This darn old suit. Oh, Father, not you. But I had it. It was right in this pocket. I had my comb and 50 cents. There's a hole in my pocket. You can see it. Well, that's a shame, dear. <laughs> Too bad, Dan. Now, just a minute. This is different. You saw the hole in my pocket. Uh, dear, if you were out earning your own living, you wouldn't afford to lose money like that. I didn't lose it. It, it, it fell through the hole. If you were eating in restaurants, you couldn't go in and say, I had some money, but it fell through a hole. <laughs> Margaret... Do you mean that I can't... I'm sorry, but you know what you told the children. You made up the rules. Well, if that isn't a fine, how do you do? The point is, Father, you must be careful with your money. You should have made sure it wouldn't fall out of your pocket. You can't just throw it around, Daddy. All right. <laughs> Come on, bud. We'll just go in the living room while the rest of you eat. Okay. No fair plotting. We're not plotting. Gee, Dad, are you sure you don't have any nickels or dimes or anything? Not a nickel. Well, I looked through all of my... Hey, I found something in the pocket of this jacket. What is it? We can eat, Dad. I got two tickets to the Father and Son's Banquet Friday night. That's tonight. By George, why not? Get a good meal, probably, if we hurry. Let's go, Dad. I'm starved. Get your coat on, son. I'll take the tickets and... Bud, how long have you had these tickets? <laughs> I don't know. Why? These tickets are for the Father and Son's Banquet, Friday, 1951. <laughs> I guess they wouldn't be good now. <laughs> oh, great. Are you leaving, dear? Uh, no. We've changed our minds. Dad, maybe we'd better go back in the dining room. Maybe they'll drop something. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret. Yes? What is it, dear? Uh, you and the children were right. I, I, I didn't mean to be grouchy. Just hungry, I guess. 
Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, I think you proved your point, dear. And the children have learned a very valuable lesson. Why don't we call off the game and you and Buck... No, honey, and... rules are rules. Oh, Dad. No, I... Mommy! Something's burning! Oh, good heavens, the casserole in the oven. Get it out quick! Out of the way, Bud. Move your big feet, Bud. Open the oven. Oh, it's burned to a crisp. I forgot all about it, and that was our dinner. How did I ever do such a thing? Well, it's too oh. bad, but oh. I think it solves our problem. How, Father? Well, this cancels the last meal of the week, so I vote that your mother takes us all out to dinner. Me? How? With that jar full of money that we've paid in all week. <laughs> A perfectly super idea. <laughs> All right, get your coats on. Hurry up, I'm starved. Just one thing I'd like to mention, honey. Yes, dear? If you were out earning your own living, cooking in a restaurant, <laughs> you'd have to be more careful. Yes, dear. I didn't think I'd make it, but by George, I got the last word. <laughs> This is Jerry Marshall. It's almost time now to say good night. And we hope it will be a good night for everybody. That none of you will spend the hours after you go to bed turning and tossing sleeplessly because of the caffeine in the coffee you drank. If caffeine often does bother you, start drinking instant Sanka coffee instead. Instant Sanka can't keep you awake because it's had 97% of the caffeine taken out. You can drink as many cups as you wish, as late as you wish, without ever paying the price of a sleepless night. Instant Sanka is all pure coffee, too. Wonderful coffee. Pick up the large economy-sized jar tomorrow, and from now on, enjoy a really good coffee and a good night's sleep by drinking Instant Sanka coffee. <laughs> Anderson's are back in the white frame house on Maple Street, all fed and feeling considerably better. There's still a slight haze of burned casserole in the air, but it's clearing. Jim and Margaret are counting out what's left of the kitty. Like this. Fourteen fifty here, dear. I have eleven seventy-five. There's still another stack of coins. I'm still wondering how you managed to get along all week on twenty-five cents for lunch. And how did you buy gasoline for the car? I didn't eat lunches. I didn't buy gas for the car. I walked to the office. Oh. I not only trimmed the budget, I trimmed my waistline. The children learned a lesson in handling money, and I lost eight pounds. <laughs> oh, you're so smart. I won't deny it. <laughs> again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson. Until then, good night and good luck from the makers of Post 40% Bran Flakes, the cereal preferred and eaten by far more people than any other Bran Flakes, and Instant Sanka, the delicious coffee that lets you sleep. In our cast were Rhoda Williams as Betty, Gene Vanderpile, Ted Donaldson, and Helen Strome. Calcium is essential to a child's growth. And now there's calcium in hot wheat meal. Calcium helps build strong, sturdy bones. And now there's calcium in hot wheat meal. Calcium helps build good, strong teeth. And now there's calcium in hot wheat meal. Yes, a one-ounce serving contains one-third of your daily calcium needs. Serve your children calcium-enriched post-wheat meal. Kids love that nut-like flavor. Wheat meal cooks instantly. Get new post-wheat meal with more calcium than any other cereal, hot or cold. Father Knows Best, based on characters created by Ed James, was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul West and Roswell Rogers. This is Bill Foreman speaking. This is NBC, the radio network.